You'd expect a microbiologist's pool to be pretty clean. <laughs> the water looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> Which is just as well. Like any mum, Helen Stratton wouldn't let her kids near water that might make them sick. In actual fact, I took them out of swim lessons because I wasn't happy with the water quality. Keeping an eye on the kids goes beyond pool safety. Helen's one of many Queensland scientists working to ensure the safety of drinking water recycled from treated sewage. I think this idea of toilet to tap is a really bad misconception. It's way past that. The water will be cleaner than any of the water ever going into the dam. But not all microbiologists agree that the technology is safe. If you use water as your source from sewage, you're starting off with a thousand to a million times higher concentration of viruses, bacteria and probably drugs than it is even in a polluted river. So you're starting off with a much more dangerous water source. We've had a hundred years of protecting public health by making sure we have clean drinking water. You know, we're not about to undo that. We don't know what it is that we don't know about. And there is destruction confronting us, therefore we must drink from the sewers. It's a public debate about science that hasn't changed since 2006. Toilet water is toilet water. Um, damn water, I don't think, has been toilet water ever, so, yeah. When I visited my hometown of Toowoomba, the first city to vote on water recycling. Mr Bernkofer, the Yes campaign says that science was a loser today, so who won? Oh, what? Oh, come on, no, come on. The community does not need to know anything about the science. Despite a 60% vote against it, Toowoomba can now plug into a brand new water recycling scheme that covers all of South East Queensland. It's been a $9 billion investment in interconnecting pipelines and desalination and recycled water technology. It's certainly uh, massive and probably its only comparable uh, project is the Snowy Mountain Scheme. At full capacity, water recycling can purify more than 200 million litres every day using secondary treated waste from six sewage treatment plants. We measure about 350 contaminants in the treated water. We wanted to target our testing based on the sorts of things that we, we found were coming into the plant to be treated in the first place. Pharmaceuticals, herbicides, pesticides, microbiological contaminants and, and even radionuclides. Usually, all of these nasties end up in our rivers for others to drink downstream. The water that used to go into the rivers in the bay is our feedstock. That's our inflow. And we take that water and take out the contaminants. What makes this advanced water treatment plant different are the three extra steps it adds to the existing treatment process. What's happening in these pipes? Well, this is our vacuum filtration unit. This is barrier three of the seven barrier process. Each tube is packed with thousands of fine hollow fibres that filter out tiny particles and most microbes. Under very great pressure, the water is forced through those tubes. They have holes in them, one three hundredth the size of a human hair. And this, this takes out the particulates. Only then is the filtered water ready to enter the reverse osmosis tubes, the most important part of the process. This technology is basically the same technology that's used in desalination. At its core, a membrane so thin that a stack of 5,000 of them would be only one millimetre thick. They're bound into stacks, interleaved with spaces for water to flow through and rolled tightly into cylinders. Spiralled inside these 50 tubes are more than a hectare of membranes. They're not like sieves with tiny holes. Rather, the membranes work like a massive artificial kidney, drawing water out of the passing waste stream. Water diffuses through the membrane to come out as hydrogen and oxygen, basically. So it must take a lot of pressure. It does take a lot of pressure. This is the highest power part of the plant. Down at the atomic level, water molecules are attracted to the membranes and pushed through by up to 20 atmospheres of pressure.
but viruses can only get through if there's a hole in the membrane. The water quality is pretty good, our pH is well within range. To guarantee safety, the system is designed for overkill. Not very much can go wrong, uh, to be honest. Most of the system is automated. It's when things do go wrong that worries Professor Collignon. My main concern is that it may not remove all the viruses in particular, but other germs and also all the drugs that we need to make it safe for people to drink all the time. Trust me, I'm an engineer is worse than trust me, I'm a doctor. Trust me, I'm a microbiologist. <laughs> or trust me, I'm a microbiologist. Have you done your own research, your own testing of, of this kind of water? No, we don't, because we have, we're not that sort of laboratory. This is the lab in Queensland that does. For more than a year, a small scientific army has been testing samples from the advanced water treatment plants for chemicals, microbes and viruses. The people that are actually doing research in the area have concluded that this poses no additional risk to our community. In addition to this work, Helen Stratton's university research is developing more rapid techniques to measure pathogens in water. I'm really comfortable as a microbiologist and I'm quite paranoid about what I drink and what I eat, um, I will be drinking the water. But there's plenty of doubt about that out in the suburbs. No, it just doesn't make sense to me. Anyone that feeds their kids water like that got rocks in their heads, mate. I don't really like the idea of it, drinking it very much. But uh, not much we can really do. Yeah, I guess you put your life in their hands, really. This is the Wyvernhoe Dam, where much of southeast Queensland gets its drinking water from, and it's at the centre of the recycled water debate. Now, as you can see, right now, it's only about a third full. And even though there's up to 100 million litres of pure water ready to be pumped into here every day, while there's public opposition to the plan, the water's just not going to flow. Heavy rains have eased the drought and topped up the water supplies. So the government decided to add recycled water to the dam only in emergencies, for now. It's not about switching it on and off. I think we need to make the decision to do it or not to do it. The government have agreed that it's a safe process. And that's the key issue. The treatment plant has to reduce viruses by at least a billion times or in mathematical terms, by log nine. To achieve safety from a viral point of view, we've got to get log nine or more. To put it another way, the chance that a virus is left behind is one in a billion. If we look at log nine, which is a billion-fold reduction, that represents a 99.9999999 reduction. In other words... Percent reduction. Percent reduction, which sounds very impressive. Um, but that's the sort of reduction we have to achieve all the time. That's exactly why, at the advanced treatment plant, they monitor the performance of each stage every second. Well, this is one of our critical control points for the plant. It gives us an idea of how intact the membrane is and gives us that guarantee. And what happens if there's a tear in the membrane and it goes above a certain level? If this level goes above our, our critical level, we'll raise an alarm and it'll shut the plant down. Immediately? Immediately. Even if the alarms do go off, any lingering viruses or toxics still have to get past a lethal combination of hydrogen peroxide and ultraviolet radiation. The intensity of the UV is somewhere around 300 times that of the sun. And this is a very similar technology to what's used in the medical industry for sterilization. And so what can survive? Nothing can survive this. What they have to achieve is the national target for recycled water safety. That's log 9.5 reduction of viruses. Data provided to Catalyst show they can, removing viruses even up to log 12. If they're meeting that target, is that OK? Well, I would be reassured by that because a lot of the other plants haven't even achieved that. But I still think there's a problem even with those guidelines. They run on 95 percentiles. Now, again, that means one in 20, it may not meet it. And to me, that's not stringent enough. 
That's why Queensland legislation requires the safety targets to be met 100% of the time and reported if they don't. The science speaks for itself. There is no doubt that this can be a safe and reliable source of drinking water supply, but there is a way to go to actually convince the community um, of the, um, the evidence that's before them. The water's safe, and it's safe beyond doubt, and that there's safety checks in place to know if it wasn't going to be safe.